Yeah. Coding of linear block codes. That is the formation of generator matrix. Is there any systematic approach for the formation of generator matrix? Yes, we will come to uh, tomorrow when we talk about some class of linear block codes. We will talk about some of the construction. So there is uh, basically uh, there are some nice algebraic constructions for these generator matrices. As I said, in this talk, we are going to talk about what determines the uh, error correction capability of the code, and we will uh, we are going to talk about uh, given a let's say minimum dis what is the concept of minimum distance of a code and how many errors can it correct? How many errors can we detect? that we are going to talk about in this lecture. So yes, there is systematic approach and there are different types of codes and each code has its own way of generating these generator matrix. Also between the generator matrix and the correcting capability. Exactly, exactly. So you, there are exactly, you are absolutely right. So basically from the generator matrix and the H matrix, accordingly the error correcting capability or the minimum distance of the code is, is determined. In fact, we will show you now how the minimum distance of a code is related to the columns of the parity check matrix. So as the topic says, this is about distance properties of linear block code. So what do we mean by distance property? So we are going to describe first, in fact, I think we have already encountered the definition of Hamming distance, right? Hamming distance of a code. Uh, and we are going to introduce this concept of minimum distance of a code and we are going to talk about so weight distribution of linear block codes and how this is related to random error correction capability of a code we are going to talk about that how this is related to random error detection capability of a code and how is this minimum distance related, how can we find a minimum distance of a code? How is it related to the columns of the parity check matrix? So all this we are going to discuss in this lecture. So let V be a binary n tuple. So basically V is of length n and each of these bits can be 0 or 1. So Hamming distance is Hamming weight of a V is defined as number of non-zero components of V. And similarly, we define Hamming distance between two n tuples V and W as number of places in which they differ. So for example, if you consider V to be 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 and W to be 0 1 0 0 0 1 1, then you can see this differs in first bit location, second bit location, fourth bit location, that is it. So it differs in three bit location, first, second and fourth. So the Hamming distance is three. Now the Hamming distance satisfies what we call triangular inequality. So if V, W and X a 3 binary n tuple, then Hamming distance between V and W plus Hamming distance between W and X is greater than equal to Hamming distance between V and X. Now let us prove this. We know that Hamming distance between 2 n tuple is nothing but weight of some of those n tuples. So Hamming distance between V and W is nothing but weight of V plus W. Similarly, Hamming distance between W and X is weight of W plus X and Hamming distance between V and X is nothing but weight of V plus X. Now for any two code vectors A and B, weight of A plus weight of B is greater than equal to weight of a plus B. Why? Why is this true? Exactly. So A and B may have overlap at some locations. So if that happens, weight of A plus B will get decreased. Otherwise, 
if a and b are all have ones at different location then this would be equality so you agree that weight of a plus weight of b is greater than or equal to weight of a plus b now you i just have to cleverly pick a b that's it because i want this triangular inequality of the form this i had weight of a plus weight of b greater than or equal to weight of a plus b i just have to now cleverly choose a and b i choose a to be v plus w i choose b to be w plus x then what is a plus b v plus w plus w plus x which is v plus x so then what i have shown is weight of v plus w plus weight of w plus x is greater than equal to weight of v plus x now what is weight of v plus w this is hamming distance between v and w what is weight of v plus x that is hamming distance between w and x and what is weight of v plus x that is hamming distance between v and x has proved easy hmm okay so as proved now we are defining the minimum distance of a linear block code as minimum hamming distance between any two code words where v and w are not same so basically it's it's minimum hamming distance between any two distinct code words is your minimum distance of a code we define minimum weight of a code as minimum weight of a non zero code word v belongs to code word and v is not a all zero code word so minimum weight of a non zero code word that is defined as minimum weight of a code now what we are going to show you is the minimum distance of a code is nothing but minimum weight of a code how so let's first look at the definition of minimum distance of a code what is minimum distance of a code it's a distance between v and w where v and w belongs to this code word c and v and w are distinct code words they are not same now what is hamming distance between v and w it is hamming weight of v plus w now what is v plus w v is a valid code word w is a valid code word so v plus w is also a valid code word so let us denote it by x where x is a valid code word and of course v and w cannot be same so v plus w cannot be zero so what we have shown is minimum distance of a code is nothing but minimum weight of a non zero code word and what is that that is minimum weight of a code so minimum distance of a code is same as minimum weight of a non zero code word so if, if if you enumerate let's say all possible code words for a particular and you find out what's the minimum weight of a code that's the minimum distance of a code now why are we interested in minimum distance of a code we will soon see that the error correcting capability and the error detecting capability of a code depends on minimum distance of the code so the first theorem that we are going to show is as follows let c be a linear nk code whose parity check matrix is given by h now for each code word of hamming weight l there exist l columns of h such that vector sum of these columns is equal to zero vector so what i'm saying is if there exist a code word of weight l then l columns of the parity check matrix should add up to zero okay 
how do we prove this? Let us denote the parity check matrix by capital H and the columns of these parity check matrix as H0, H1, H2, Hn minus 1. Remember parity check matrix is n minus k cross n matrix. So, there are n minus k rows, rank is n minus k and there are n columns. So, these are the n columns H0, H1, H2, H n minus 1. Let H i represent the ith column of H. Now, what do we have to prove? We have to show that there is a code word whose Hamming weight is L. That means, there are L components of this code word which are non-zero. So, we have to show if such a code word exists, then L columns of the parity check matrix should add up to 0. So, let V i 1, V i 2, V i L are these L non-zero components of the valid code word, where V i L, V i 2, V i 2, V i 1, V i 2, V i 3, V i L, these are 1 and all other locations are 0. Since V is a valid code word, so it satisfies this property V H transpose is 0. Okay. Now, let us compute V H transpose, what is V? V is this V 0, V 1, V 2, this n tuple. So, I do V H transpose and H is given by this. So, when I do V H transpose, what I get is this V 0 is multiplied by H 0, V 1 multiplied by H 1, V n minus 1 multiplied by H n minus 1. Now, what do you know? You know that this code word is 1 at L locations, all other locations it is 0. So, that means out of this it is only 1 at V i 1, V i 2, V i 3, V i l 1, all other locations it is 0. So, then 0 multiplied by the column will be 0. So, what you are left is something like this and what is V i 1, V i 2, V i 3, V i 1, these are all 1. So, what we get now is then H of i 1 plus H of i 2 plus H of i 3 up to H of i l, the vector sum of these is basically 0. So, what we have proved is if there exists a code word of Hamming weight L, then L columns of the parity check matrix, they add up to 0. Is this clear? I am showing the other way around. Now, I am showing if there exist L columns of H whose vector sum is 0, then there must be a code word of Hamming weight L. So, let us assume without loss of generality that H i 1, H i 2, H i L are the L columns of the parity check matrix, which are 0, which whose sum vector sum is 0. So, H i 1 plus H i 2 plus H i 3 up to H i L is going to be 0. Now, let us form an n tuple, let us call it x 1, x 2, x 3, x n and let us say its L components are non-zero and these L components are, I am sorry, huh, this is x, x 0, I, the x 0 is missing basically x 0, x 1, yeah that is a typo here, is x, x 0, x 1, x 2, x, x n minus 1, basically they are, that is an n tuple and the non-zero components are x of i 1, x of i 2, x of i l. So, its Hamming weight is l. Now, what we need to show is if vector sum of l columns add up to 0, there exists a code word of Hamming weight l. Now, how do you show that a particular code word of weight l is a valid code word? Exactly. So, we know that if let us say x is a valid code word, x h transpose 
should be 0. So, what we will do is we will take a x which has one set L locations and we are going to find x h transpose. We are already given this condition. We are going to make use of this to show that x h transpose where x is non-zero component in L locations that is basically x h transpose will, will be equal to 0. So, let us compute this. So, what is x h transpose? This x 0 h 0 plus x 1 h 1 up to x n minus 1 h n minus 1. Now, we know that L components of x are non-zero and those are x i 1, x i 2, x i 3. So, these are non-zero and we know so these are x i 1, x i 2, x i 3, x i L are is equal to 1. So, what we get is h i 1 plus h i 2 plus h i 3 plus h i L they add up to 0. Now, this are L columns adding up sorry we from from here we get this right. Now, why is this 0? Because it is given to us if there exist L columns of this whose vector sum is 0. So, it is given that L L columns, L columns of this H matrix add up to 0, right. So, from, from here we get this. Now, since L columns of H matrix add up to 0, then then X H transpose is 0, which means X is a valid code word. So, thus X is a valid code word in C. So, using these, rest, so what we have shown, we have shown if there exists a code word of weight L, then H columns, L columns of H add up to 0 and we have shown the other way around, if the L columns of paradigmatic matrix add up to 0, then there exists a code word of weight L. So, if C is a linear block code with paradigmatic matrix H and no D minus 1 or fewer columns of h add up to 0, then the code has minimum weight of at least d. So, what is it saying? If d minus 1 or less columns do not add up to 0, then code word has weight at least d, right? Because the minimum number of columns that add up to 0 shows that those way number of code word has that particular weight. So, if d minus 1 or less columns are not adding up to 0, then possibly d or more columns are getting added, added up to 0. So, the code word has minimum weight at least d. This follows from the result we have proved. Any questions here? Let C be a linear block code with parity check matrix H. The minimum weight of C is d min is basically equal to the minimum number of columns of H that add up to 0. So, minimum number of columns of the paradigmatic matrix that add up to 0 that will give us the minimum Hamming distance, a minimum weight of the code. Okay. Now, this is the example that we are, you are seeing for a 6 3 code. Now, if you look at this particular code, so there is an all 0 code word, this code word has weight 3, this code word has weight 3, this code word has weight 4, this code word has weight 3, this has weight 4, this has weight 4, this has weight 3. Can you tell me what is the minimum distance of this code? 3. Why? Because the minimum weight of a code word is 3. So, you can see there are there is one code word of 0 weight which is all 0 code word and then there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 code words of weight 3 and there is 1, 2, 3, 3 code words of weight 
4. So, let a i be the number of code words in C with Hamming weight i, then this set a 0, a 1, a 2, a n is called the weight distribution of the code. Why is a 0 1? Because for a linear block code, all 0 code word is a valid code word. And why is the summation of a i equal to 2 raise power k? Exactly, total number of code words is for, for binary n k code is 2 to the power k. In our example, which we did, a 0 was 1, there is 1 code word of all 0 weight, the 4 code words of weight 3, 3 code words of weight 4, others basically all 0. And you can see they add up to 1 plus 4, 5 plus 3, 8, that is 2 to the power 3. This was a 6, 3 code. And d min is minimum weight of the code word, which is basically 3. Now, probability of undetected error for a binary symmetric channel is given by this expression. Now, what is undetected error? When does undetected error happen? So, undetected error will happen basically when uh, error pattern is a valid code word, correct? Because then when it adds to the transmit code word, it gets transformed into some another code word. So, I said for a binary symmetric channel, the undetected error probability is given by this expression. Can you tell me how did I get this expression? So, let us think. So, this is a linear code. So, the probability of error should not depend on what code I transmit, whether I transmit all 0 code word or something else should not matter, correct. So, let us assume you are sending all 0 code word. Now, when you are sending all 0 code word, when will error happen? <laughs> so, when uh, undetected error will happen, if you receive any other valid code word other than the all 0 code word. Now, from the weight distribution of the code, you know how many codes of weight i are present in that n k code. Okay. Now, let us say I transmit a particular all 0 code word and you received a code word of weight i. What is the probability of getting that? That means, i bits got flipped because I transmitted all 0 code word, but you received a code word which has weight i. That means, i bits got flipped and we are considering a binary symmetric channel. What does a binary symmetric channel look like? So, you transmit a 0, you receive a 0 with probability 1 minus p. You transmit 0, you get a 1 with probability p. You transmit 1, you get 1 with probability 1 minus p and you get 0 with probability p. So, then if my all 0 code word got flipped into a code word of weight i, what is that probability? That means, at i locations, the bits got flipped. What is that probability? p raised to power i. And what is the probability the remaining n minus i bits did not get flipped? That is 1 minus p raised to the power n minus i. And how many such code words are there? AI. So, this is the probability of getting a code word of weight i. Now, I need to sum this up over all non zero code word. So, note here i goes from 1, not 0, because I am transmitting 0 and you are getting some other valid code word, which is non zero code word. So, this summation goes from 1 to n, and so this is your probability of undetected error. Is this clear? So, 
first we found the term p to the power i into 1 minus p to the power m minus yeah. we multiply it with by ai because same is happening with others exactly so let let us assume there and then we need to sum over all i's because uh, whether weight 1 error whether a weight 1 code word you received or weight 2 code word you receive weight 3 code word you receive these are all examples of unrated error when I am tr transmitting a all 0 code word. So, for the example that we have considered we had a 3 I think had 4 there were 3 code words of there were 4 code words of weight 3 and we had uh, 3 code words of weight 4. So, if you look at that this becomes this now typically this crossover probability is much smaller. So, uh, and so p raised over 4 will be much smaller term and 1 minus p will be probably closer to 1. So, this is roughly of the order of 4 raised to power p 3 and this was a 6 3 code ok. In fact, the undated error probability is actually related to number of parity bits. I think in the morning somebody was asking question about undated error probability how we can reduce it. You want to reduce undated error probability? You have to increase your number of parity bits. So, we can make it go smaller and smaller provided we increase our n minus k. n minus k is basically number of parity bits that we are adding. Now, let us so we have defined minimum distance of a code. Now, let us see how minimum distance of the code determines how many errors we can detect. So, a code word with minimum distance d min no error pattern of weight d min minus 1 or less can change a transmitted code word into another code word. Now, what I am saying? So, if the minimum distance between two code words is d min any error pattern of weight less than equal to d min minus 1 is not going to change it to any other valid code word. Do you agree with this? Let us say our separation between us is d min. So, you throw in any error which is less than d min I am not going to become any valid code word. So, all error patterns of weight less than equal to d min minus 1 are detectable error pattern. So, I can detect all error patterns up to weight d min minus 1. So, all error patterns with d min minus 1 or fewer errors are detectable and this is known as random error detecting capability of the code ok. Now, in general you may be able to detect even more, but that is some specific example. For example, if the minimum distance of a code is even, then it can detect all odd weight error patterns. Why? Because whenever an odd weight error happens, it would not change it to an any even weight pattern. So, you can have actually in some cases uh, even uh, I mean detect more more than that, but if your minimum distance is d min you are guaranteed to detect d min minus 1 error pattern. That is because no error pattern of weight d min minus 1 or less can change it to a valid code word because the minimum separation between two code words is d min ok. Now, let us talk about random error correcting capability of the code. So, we said that uh, minimum distance uh, if, if the minimum distance is d min then it can detect d min minus 1 errors. Go back to the example that we saw in the morning rate 1 half repetition code what is the minimum distance of the code rate 1 half hmm? 2 because 
for 0 you are transmitting 0 0 or for 1 you are transmitting 1 1. So, minimum distance of the code is 2. So, how many errors can it correct detect 2 minus 1 1. So, you noticed when I do rate 1 half. So, for 0 I trans I get transmit 0 0 and for 1 I transmit 1 1. Now, let us say one of them okay, one of them gets flipped let us say I get I received 0 1 then are you not able to detect it? You are able to detect it. What happens if 2 bits get flipped? You are not that is an undetected error in this case. Now, go back to rate one third example. What is the minimum distance of the code? 3. So, how many errors it can detect? Which becomes can you detect error? How? Because you expect all the 3 bits to be same 1 error, 2 error. Can you detect? I can still detect there is an error. Now, I cannot. Okay. So, you saw that minimum distance of code is how it is related to the error detecting capability of the code. Now, we are going to talk about how is minimum distance of code related to the error correcting capability. How many error can it correct? So, if you have a code C with minimum distance D min, it is capable of correcting all error patterns of weight T or less, where T is given by this. So, 2 T plus 1 D min lies between 2 T plus 1 and 2 T plus 2. Okay. Now, we will we are going to prove this now that a linear block code with minimum distance t can correct t errors where t is given by this relation. Okay. So, how do we prove it? Let us assume code word v was transmitted and what you received is sequence r. Let us assume there is another code word w, which is not same as v to be any other code word. Now, from the triangular inequality, we know the Hamming distance between v and w is less than equal to Hamming distance between v and r plus Hamming distance between r and w. Now, let us assume that the error pattern has weight t dash. So, the error pattern has weight t dash, what you transmitted was v, what you received was r. So, then the Hamming distance between v and r is equal to t dash, correct. Now, since v and w are code words, what do you expect? the minimum the Hamming distance between v and w has to be at least d min, because v and w are valid code words. So, the separation between v and w should be at least d min, right. So, Hamming distance between I mean distance between v and w is greater than equal to d min and this is greater than equal to 2 t plus 1. This follows from here that d min is lower bounded by 2 t plus 1. Okay. Now, if I use this, so I got a bound on this, this is equal to t dash. So, what is this? This can be given by this minus this is this minus this is at least this. So, we can write Hamming distance between r and w is greater than Hamming distance between v and w minus Hamming distance between v and r. This follows from the triangular inequality that we had earlier. 
Now, what is this? This is at least 2 t plus 1 and what is the maximum value of Hamming distance in V and R? This is t dash. Okay. So, then Hamming distance between R and W is given by is at least 2 t plus 1 minus t dash. And what is my max what is t dash? t dash is an error pattern of weight up to t. So, then what is Hamming distance between R and W? It is greater than equal to t plus 1. Correct. Now, what I have shown you now is this. I have shown you that Hamming distance between R and W is greater than equal to t plus 1, whereas Hamming distance between V and R is less than t. Then maximum likelihood decoder will decide in favor of what? V or W? V because Hamming distance between V and R is less, it is t, whereas this is greater than t. Okay. So, the decoder will decode in favor of V and not W, which is correct, because I transmitted code word V. So, what I have shown you is when minimum distance was at least 2 t plus 1, it is able to correct t errors, because my decoder I just showed you my decoder would not make an error. Okay. So, what I have shown is R receive sequence is closer to V than any other code word and hence the maximum likelihood decoder will correctly decode. So, in other words, if minimum distance is at least 2 t plus 1, it can detect, it can correct t errors. Now, go back to our example of rate half repetition code. What is d min? What is t? So, you are saying that rate one half repetition code cannot correct any error, which is true. If you see that, let us say I transmit 1 1 and you receive 0 1, can you tell? whether it is 0 0 or 1 1, you cannot. So, it cannot correct any error. Let us go back and look at rate one third repetition code. What was d min there? 3. What is t? So, you are saying that it can correct single error. Now, look at. So, I for 0 I transmit 0 0 0 and for 1 I transmit 1 1 1. Now, let us say 1 bit got flipped. So, instead of 1 1 1, I received 0 1 1. What are you going to do? You are going to say look, it is most more likely that 1 bit got flipped from 1 to 0 rather than 2 bits getting flipped from 0 to 1. Hence, you will say that transmitted code word is 1 1 1 and you will decode it. So, it can it can correct single error can it correct double errors? No, you will make a mistake. If we try to uh, correct double error, it cannot correct, because double error means 1 1 1 would be 0 0, let us say 0 0 1 and you will wrongly decode it as 0 0 0. So, it cannot correct double errors. Okay. So, so, is this clear? How is minimum distance related to the error correcting capability of the code and error detecting capability of the code. Now, I am going to show you. So, I said that if the d min lies between 2 t plus 1 and 2 t plus 2, I said it can correct t errors. The next question is, I am going to show you if there is an error pattern of weight greater than t that is t plus 1, then my decoder will make an error. So, it cannot correct errors of weight t plus 1. If my d min lies between 2 t plus 1 and 2 t plus 2. 
So to prove this, what I'm going to do is I'll consider, let us consider two code words V and W and assume that the minimum distance between V and W is equal to D min, which is a valid assumption. I can choose any V and W which are minimum distance apart. Let E and E 1 be two error patterns and I choose E 1 and E 2 in such a way these error patterns such that E 1 plus E 2 is V plus W. There is no overlapping ones between E 1 and E 2. So, weight of E 1 plus E 2 is weight of E 1 plus weight of E 2 and weight of E 1 is at least T plus 1. So, I cook up these error pattern because I am trying to show you that if there exists an error pattern of weight T plus 1 or more, my decoder will be fooled. It cannot correct. It will, it will, it will do wrong decoding. So, since weight of E 1 plus weight of E 2 is weight of E 1 plus E 2 and E 1 plus E 2 is weight of V plus W, which is nothing but Hamming distance between V and W. This is just a typo, uh, this V comma W, the Hamming distance between V comma W and this is nothing but from the, from this we know it is equal to minimum distance of the code. Okay. So, what I have shown you is weight of E 1 plus weight of E 2 is equal to minimum distance of the code. Now, let us assume that V was transmitted and the error pattern was E 1 which is of weight T plus 1 and I am going to show you the decoder will instead of decoding in favor of V will decode in favor of somebody else, some other code word. That means, it cannot detect, uh, it cannot correct error pattern of weight E 1, which is at least to T plus 1. So, let us assume that code word V was transmitted and what you receive was R. Now, let us find out the Hamming distance between some other code word W and R. So, this is nothing but weight of W plus R. Now, what is R? R is V plus E 1. So, this will be W plus V plus E 1. Now, what is V plus W? This is we chose it as E 1 plus E 2. Okay. So, if you plug this one in, this will be E 1 plus E 2 plus E 1. So, this will be weight of E 2 and what is weight of E 2? From here, weight of E 2 is D min minus weight of E 1. So, D min minus weight of E 1. What is maximum D min? that is 2 t plus 2 and what is weight of E 1? It is at least t plus 1. So, Hamming distance between W and R is less than t plus 1. Now, what is the Hamming distance between V and R? What is the Hamming distance between V and R? that is equal to weight of E 1 and what is weight of E 1? At least 2 t plus 1. So, what I have shown you is weight of Hamming distance between W and R is less than equal to Hamming distance between V and R. So, my maximum likelihood decoder will decode in favor of W not V. Remember, I transmitted V. So, this is a decoding failure. That means, it cannot correct error of weight T plus 1 or more. So, what I have shown you is following. In the first result, I showed you it can correct lead, uh, 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 correct errors of pattern up to T. In this, I have shown you with a specific example, because I remember I cooked up my E 1 and E 2 in such a way that E 1 plus E 2 is V plus W, weight of E 1 E 2 is non overlapping. So, I cooked up my E 1 and E 2 in such a way and I showed you that the if there is an error pattern of weight T plus 1, then your decoder will make an error if minimum distance lies between 2 T plus 1 and 2 T plus 2. In other words, the guaranteed random error correcting capability 
of the code is t, when minimum distance lies between 2t plus 1 and 2t plus 2. Clear? Any questions? Okay. So, hence a um, block code with minimum distance d min can decode any error pattern of weight up to d, where t is given by this floor of d min minus 1 by 2. And t is called the random error correcting capability of the code. Now, in this theorem what I am saying is, if there exists an n k linear code whose minimum distance is d min, then all n tuples of weight t, where t is given by this or less can be used as coset leaders of the standard array. Now, this is clear because if it is t error correcting code, then all error patterns of weight up to t should be coset leader. So, since the minimum distance of the code is d min, the minimum weight of the code is also d min. Now, let us assume x and y are two n tuples of weight t or less. Now, what we are going to show you is x and y, if they are both n tuples of weight t or less, they will not be in the same coset. Now, if they are not in the same coset, what it would mean is all patterns of weight up to t are in different cosets and we can always make them coset leader. And if we make them coset leader, we can correct those errors. That is what we are going to prove. Now, how do we show that x and y are not in the same tuple, same, same coset. So, to prove that we do this, weight of x plus y is less than equal to weight of x plus weight of y, you agree? Because x and y may have some common places where they are one, same. Now, this is less than equal to 2t two, two because x and y are both n tuples of weight up to t. So, weight of x plus y is less than equal to 2 t, which is less than less than d min. Why? Because d min is at least 2 t plus 1. Now, suppose x and y are in the same coset, then what is going to happen? If x and y are going to be in same coset, then x plus y must be a non-zero code word. Why? Recall the elements in the coset e i, e i plus v i. So, if you take any two uh, code words, I mean if you look, if any two elements in a coset, if you recall we had something of this form, where is my duster? Yeah, okay. If you look at a particular element, let us say it was e i, we had e i plus v 1, e i plus v 2, e i plus v j like that we had elements. Now, if you take any two elements, let us take this and this, if you add them up, what do you get? E i E i will add up to 0 and you will get V 1 plus V j, which is another valid code word. You can take any element, let us say, we let us take this and this. Again, we add up E i E i will cancel out, what you will get is V 2. So, when you take two elements of a coset and add them up, what you get is a valid code word. Then, if it is a valid code word, what is the minimum distance of that? That should be at least d min, because minimum distance of a code is d min. Now, what we have shown here is the x and y, the Hamming weight of x and y is less than d min. That means, x and y cannot be in the same coset. Because if they are in the same coset, x plus y must be a code word and minimum distance, minimum weight at least should be d min. So, what I have shown is x and y do not belong to the same coset. 
and what is x and y x and y are error patterns of weight up to t now if they don't belong to same coset that means they belong to all different cosets can i safely say that all error patterns of weight up to t they all belong to different cosets now if they belong to different cosets i can always make them my coset leader i can always make them coset leader it's up to me which element i want i will make them coset leader and if i make them coset leader then those are all correctable error pattern so so what i have shown here is like it is impossible that x and y belong to the same coset that means they belong to different cosets and if they belong to different cosets that means i can always make those error patterns as my coset leader so this proves my theorem that all n tuples of weight t or less can be made coset leaders of my standard array and hence they are also correctable error patterns next result is similar to showing that if i have an error correcting code whose minimum this is d min if all n tuples of weight t or less are used as coset leader then there is at least one n tuple whose weight is t plus 1 that cannot be be a coset leader so this result effectively shows that i cannot correct error pattern of t plus 1 so let v be the minimum weight code word and let x and y be to n tuples that satisfies these two properties x plus y is equal to v and x plus y do not have any non zero component in common place so weight of x plus y is weight of x plus weight of y now from the definition weight of x plus weight of y is weight of x plus y and what is x plus y that is from this x plus y is weight of v and v is minimum weight code word so weight of v will be d min okay now if we choose weight of y to be t plus 1 then weight of x is either t or t plus 1 why because minimum distance between 2t plus 1 and 2t plus 2 so the if i so then which has less weight weight of x is either t or t plus 1 this is t plus 1 so weight of x is less than equal to weight of y so if i choose x as coset leader i cannot use y as coset leader now why x and y are the same coset because x and y add up to v which is a valid code word that's why x and y are the same coset because x and y add up to v which is a valid code word now what i have shown is if there exist two patterns one of weight up to t other of weight t plus 1 if i choose one of them which is of weight uh, t or t plus 1 if i make this as coset leader then i cannot choose another error pattern of weight t plus 1 as my coset leader and if i cannot choose that as coset leader that means i cannot correct that error pattern okay so to conclude basically then i have shown you two things first is all error patterns of weight up to t they can be made coset leader and second thing i showed you was if you make all error patterns of weight up to t as coset leader then there is at least one error pattern of weight t plus 1 which cannot be made as coset leader so then that error pattern is not uh, correctable okay so with this i will conclude our discussion on distance properties of linear block code so again to summarize i have described what is meant by minimum distance of a code and i showed you how is random error correcting capability of the code and random error detectability of the code is dependent on this minimum distance okay so in the next uh, two lectures now we are going to talk about some examples of linear block codes some very simple examples of linear block codes 
will talk about them, how we can construct these codes, how we can decode these codes and then uh, we will start our discussion on convolutional codes. Okay.